Welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. Today's video is an edited version of a live. I hope you really enjoy it. Come on in, say hello everybody. It is our first Case the Caddy session and uh, I can see that you are, I've got a few people here so that's perfect. So you want to see how to make the items in the catalog. So uh, feel free to leave comments. I will try and watch. I won't be asking you for input for that for these cards like I do on my Facebook live in the VI Peeps group on Tuesday night. So, um, so you're just going to sit back and relax. You don't have to worry about trying to get your answer in really really quickly so hello Leanne and Judy thank you for coming along hello Shirley as well and uh, so I posted this morning uh, just a quick and it only came to me this morning so I'll give you a little bit more notice next time hi Jennifer that um, so I'm gonna ask you to guess what you think I might be showing you. So I gave you two pages out of the catalog in the post and all I'd like you to do is to go go into the comments and tell me which design you think I'm going to be playing with. Hello Mary. And so um, and then I'm going to put all of those names into my random picker and I'm going to show you here and we'll draw a name and that person is going to win the card that I make. So we're going to do the draw right now. Uh, well right after I make it that is. So we're going to have a little bit of back and forth with the camera. We'll see how it works. I'm hoping not to get you too seasick. And uh, let's see what else do I need to tell you. I think that that's probably it. So yes, feel free to comment. Tell me what you like. If you like the sample in the catalog. If you think that, oh, it didn't do anything for you before. So hello, Denise. And uh, what stamps might you use? Because I'm going to show you it with some different stamps. So especially the one today, I didn't have the stamp set that they used. But I just sort of went, oh, which one am I going to pick? And I stuck my finger down. And uh, that's the one I picked. And I didn't have that stamp set. But so I want to show you how you can get versatility out of those designs and make it you don't have to have that stamp set or maybe some of the dies so we're gonna get started I do have two things to tell you the first I guess is our stamping staycation and I'm gonna point you down so that I can uh, show you the the flyer that we have okay so stamping staycation if you have not heard about this yet I definitely want you to know that we are hosting a one-day stamping retreat and it is virtual and you can be anywhere in the world for this uh, we will be speaking English but there should be translations on the videos as well uh, we will be doing imperial measurements just a note for that so it's going to be fun. We've changed our logo a little bit for this one and you might be able to see what kind of um, situation, situation, what we might be doing. We are actually going to be celebrating because this is our first full year and this is our fourth stamping staycation. We keep getting bigger and we hope just a little bit better. We tweak it a little bit every time. There's three of us, Lillian, Marilyn, and myself. And we are right in the midst of our planning and our preparations and we would love for you to join us. So if you already have joined us, maybe put some hearts up there. So let's just see if uh, we have anybody watching that is already going to be joining us. It, this is where you can go register. So it is www.designwithjoe.ca slash, and that's a forward slash, Staycation Spring 21. And you can get all the details there about what you get for your $47. We start at 9 a.m. in the morning, so that's Mountain Daylight Time, and we go to 4.30. So it is a full day, but you don't have to attend the entire day. We come on every hour on the hour for a period of time. So it's like you, you will have some breaks, so don't worry about that. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want to tell you. I think that's that's all I want to share today. So I want to get right down to our uh, re um, creating. And so I'm going to narrow it down. And I'm actually doing one of the samples on page 26. And I'm going to start the sample. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show it to you. So see if you know which one it is. So Jennifer, I don't think it, there's any flowers on here. So sorry, today's not your lucky day, I guess. Okay. So here's what we're going to play with. We just have, oh, I forgot the card itself. Hold on. So here's what you need. You need one regular piece of your crumb cake cardstock, and this is eight and a half, five and a half by eight and a half, and you're gonna score it in half at four and a quarter. So you need that. 
Then you need one piece of your basic white, and this is just the regular, and it's three and three quarters by five. And then just a little piece of white. Now this is going to change possibly the size dependent on what sentiment you have to fit. I'm gonna show you some samples at the end. So the one that I'm doing is one and a quarter by one and a half. So a fairly small piece of paper. So I'm gonna set that aside for now, and we're going to work with this one. Anybody got an idea on what sample it is yet? I think I think you might. So, uh, oh, before we get going, I'm going to tell you about my host code. So this is where you can shop with me and earn rewards. So uh, every month I have a different host code and I call it Sunny Rewards. And when you shop with me and use that host code online with a $60 order, you get to um, mark off one of the sunflowers on my card. And after you fill it with sunflowers, you get $50 free. Whatever you want. You can use it on classes with me, you can use it on product. Most people use it on product. So that's, uh, if you don't have a demonstrator in Canada yet, then I would be happy and I would really appreciate your business. And um, you can shop with me and get free things. Okay, so we're gonna use the um, Stamparatus today. And I've already put my words on here. And I'm going to be using a stamp set that uh, has been around already. It's not one of our brand new ones. So this is Sailing Home. And I use this one because I thought there might be people who have it. In fact, there's probably a few of you that are watching that have it. Let me know if you do. Um, and also Father's Day is coming up. So I thought, let's do something for Father's Day. So you're going to see a few desi uh, designs and our... Um, uh, the Tuesday night that we did was Father's Day too. Okay, so I've already put my words on here and my words are you are my true north. So I'm just going to put that in. Now when you have your Stamparatus, you don't want to leave your plates in it if you're not using it. So that's why it wasn't in there and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of basic white and I'm going to put it just anywhere here, but I have an idea where it's going to go. That's a little bit too far to the right. And you'll see why I'm going to be doing this in just a moment. Okay, so I think that that's, pro that's much better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up with my cinnamon cider stamp pad. So I'm going to make sure, is it, yeah, I am on. Okay, so I didn't want to be off the screen. So I'm going to ink that up and I am going to stamp. Okay, so, oh, and I don't have my paper towel. My paper towel makes this uh, really easy. Uh, is this guy dry? This guy's pretty dry. We'll use that. Okay, so I've got that one down. Now I'm going to move down to... Two on my hinge, that's one of the benefits of the Stamparatus. This is hinge step stamping. I'm not going to re-ink, and I'm going to place that down again. Okay, so it will be a lot lighter. Next, I'm going to go up to the next one. I'm gonna go up to the second one. So I went down two, I guess to, no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna call this one, two, and three. I went down to the third one. Now I'm going up to number two. But I'm also going to move my paper. So lots of people, when they're using their Stamparatus, think that they can't use your paper, move their paper, but you can. So let's, I'm gonna move it over two little squares here. So I'm just gonna line it up again. I'm gonna put my, make sure I have my magnets in place. And this time I'm going to ink it up again. And I'm gonna stamp it lightly, just lightly. I don't want it to be quite as dark as this one. So now I've got a little bit of line, so I like that. Now I'm going down to number one, two, three, four, and I'm going to ink it up. So this, you can, you can decide how you want to do it. I want a variation in the darkness of my words. So I've got dark here, dark here. I'm going to move it back to the top, and now I'm going to move it down two squares. So if I move it down two squares, and I like using the small grid paper for this as opposed to the big side. This side has bigger squares. I think just think that it looks better. I'm not re-inking and I'm going to stamp. So this is my third pre impression. So it's sort of like I'm stamping off. Okay, so there we go. We've got some variation in color. I'm gonna ink it up again and I'm gonna come down. Let's see, what will one do for me? I'm one, I think, uh, I think I'm not gonna do one. And the reason why, why I'm not gonna do one is it's too close to this one I just did. So it's gonna to be too much in line. So I'm going to, and it's right in line with this one too. So that would look too much the same. So I think what I'm going to do is I am actually going to move my paper over two more squares. So when you're doing it like this, 
what you're getting is something that's a very consistent kind. Here we go. I'm going to do that. Very consistent kind of stamping. Okay, you're getting a straight line all the time. I'm going to go down two this time. Stamp again. Boy, I keep forgetting to use that. And I'm going to go back up. Nope. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to do one more time. And that's all I'm going to do. So play with it a little bit. You are going to like uh, how it looks for yourself one way or the other. Now, I could move it also this way if I want. But I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so we are done with our Stamparatus. I'm just going to clean it. So I've taken my Simply Chamois and I've just cut it in half just to make it easier to hold and use on my Stamparatus. And then I'm just cleaning that so that it's clean. I don't have to worry about putting my hands in it. I'm going to take everything and put it away. Well, put it aside. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Do we have some guesses in there? Uh, Carol's asking, what does the towel do? So on top of that plastic, your fingers uh, aren't as soft as you think they might be. So when you move your hands across, it actually can sort of, you don't, it doesn't move as smoothly. So this just allows you to move it a little bit smoothly, a little bit more quickly, Carol, so that it just seems to run and you get a, a smoother or more consistent application of the ink. So I hope that helps. Okay, so now we are going to pull in some Sahara sand. And the Sahara sand, I'm going to use my blending brushes. If you don't, excuse me, <clears throat> if you don't have these, these are a wonderful tool. There are tons of little bristles in here, and I've been using them quite a bit. I put just a flower on the back just to tell me sort of what color family, so I don't have one in every color. I could also use this on early espresso if I wanted, um, and I'll show you how to clean it in just a minute. So if you don't have these though, you can use a sponge dauber or you can use a sponge. So I'm just, let's go up here. I'm just going to tap it in there, give it a good tap. I always tap off onto my scrap paper. And when I do that, it just allows it to take that first big hit of color and put it on the paper as opposed to getting a splotch on my card. So now I'm just going to swirl it on go right to the top and just go wherever you want, sort of right down the middle of the page. Pick up some more color and come in. I'm not using a real heavy hand. I'm using a fairly light hand, but enough that I'm just gonna get a little bit of color down. Okay, so all you're doing is changing the color of the paper. So that's my Sahara Sand. I'm gonna take some of my Cinnamon Cider and just do the same thing. Now it's a much darker color, so I'm really making sure that I stamp off. And I'm just using a really light touch. It's just going to give it a little bit more of the cinnamony color. And I'm not doing too much of that. Now I'm gonna pull in and do some stamping. So the stamps that I'm choosing, the colors that I'm choosing are directly out of the catalog. So the colors that were used on that particular card, and I'm hoping that some of you guys um, have noticed which what card I am actually recreating, I'll show you now in case you don't. It's this guy right here. So sometimes we don't look at the, the samples that are in behind or the ones that are really close to the edge of the paper where the, where the catalog folds. I take my catalog and I do uh, coil binding so I can pull it back. And I actually think I can see maybe just a little bit better. So this is the one that I'm doing and the colors in here are Rich Razzleberry, the Suff Succulent, the uh, Cinnamon Cider, and this is Misty Moonlight with the browns that we've already used. So we've done that part already. Now I'm going to go in with some of my color. So I'm gonna go with my um, Rich Razzleberry and I've got the anchor here for that and I'm just using straight on. Now if I wanted to, which I'm going to do here, I'm going to use my soft succulent and I'm going to pick up the compass, do that with my right hand, and I'm going to stamp it once and then I get the first impression of color and then I'm going to get the second impression of color. Okay, so I want that down at the bottom. Now I'm going to go in with my sailboat and I think maybe I'll put my uh, maybe I'll put my sailboat here. I'm thinking there's a little bit of a hole here. Yeah, put my sailboat here, a little bit further down. I'm not going to put it right here. So I'm going to put it down, go off the page a little bit, and then I'm going to just have another mast coming in maybe. And I'm also then going to go in with a little bit of cinnamon cider, and I'm going to do the birds in that set. So I'm going to put some birds over here, 
maybe some down here. So when you're, I'm gonna do one more, I'm gonna do the third impression over here, just so that they're light, okay? So that is how you create the background. And now I wanna show you how to do the little tag. So I'm gonna take that piece off. Again, my piece is one and a quarter by one and a half. I've got the thanks, which does fit on here. And that's such a little piece. I'm hoping that I'm gonna get it on here straight while I'm on camera. So let's try this. Ah, not too bad, but I see I have a little bit of ink on my finger. But now I'm gonna show you, if you don't already know how to make that banner on the bottom. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna pick the middle and I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna pick right there and I'm gonna go in probably about three eighths of an inch. And then I'm gonna go from one edge and from the other corner and I'm gonna meet up with where I ended. There we go. Go and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so there we are. So I've created my little banner. Now I could do some stamping on that if I want, but if I look at the one in the catalog, they haven't done that. So I'm just gonna close this up so it's out of the way, that color, and I wanna show you the finished card. Okay, so the finished card is right here. So there's all the preparation for the card, and here's the finished card. So I had my sailboat on this card in a little bit of a different place. So this is a piece of ribbon in behind that is about four inches long. So you can just take that, fold it in half, and put it down with glue dots. And then I put little mini dimensionals in behind my tag, and the whole thing went onto my card. Okay, so that's how easy it is to case something out of the catalog. Now I wanna show you a couple other samples that I made, and I want you to try and guess where what the stamp set is. So the first one is this guy right here. So who knows what stamp set I used here? And I'm just gonna wait maybe, uh, well, I don't know. You, I will bring it out in just a second. But what I wanted to show you is how different you can get your cards to look by changing up your stamp sets. So if you don't have, uh, this looks bigger, doesn't it? If you don't have uh, some masculine or sort of collage let's talk, call these ones collage stamps, then pull in what you do have. So if you have a ton of flowers, they will work equally well. So this is, I'm seeing, oh, Jennifer's got it, the strawberry set. So there's one more. And I also want to show you one more sample here, which is this guy, and who knows which one this one is. So I wanted to show you different colors as well. So this is some different color choices, a little bit softer colors, definitely more ladylike here. So we've got a birthday card happening. So what stamp set is this one from? And the thing about this card that's great is that it just uses stamps, ink, and paper with a tiny little bit of embellishment with ribbon. You could go through your ribbon stash and pull it out. You probably have some lengths that are about this long and just fold them in half. You can see that I went with a different size tag for this one. This one also is a little different and I stamped on it. So those are some different ways. And I also want to show you how I picked my colors. So out of this set here, and I'm looking expressions in ink with a question mark. Yeah, it's expressions in ink. So this is the paper and this is all of the paper for expressions in ink and all of the colors. So I went here and I picked these colors. So the colors I have in here are pale papaya, positively pink, mint macaron, and then I went with one more color and I went with petal pink, which is just a light, a lighter color. So that's what our little dots are. So that's how you can do it. And it's a great way for you to use up the stamps that you have. Now, the best way that you can uh, help me is to make a card like this and share it in the comments. So I would love to see your designs. Everybody has so many different stamp sets that you love. You might hate flowers. If you don't like flowers, if you like cutesy, if you've got something there at home that you need to make a card for, go ahead and, and play with that. Play with different colors. Look at the designer paper you have. Pick out some of the colors there and use that. Okay, so uh, so thank you very much for joining me for our first episode. It's actually episode two, though, because at our next best thing, I um, 
I did one and I showed you and if you were there you saw it. I also put it up on my blog the other day. I hope that you enjoyed that. I'm going to come every week 11 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday and I'm going to show you a bunch of different things. So, so if you um, would like to see a particular sample in either either of our current catalogs so I'm thinking the mini if there's a spring mini one or if there's something in the annual catalog then for sure send me an email again it's joe at designwithjoe.ca and let's see if I can make that and show you take away some of the mystery okay have a great day everybody and we will see you again bye-bye